This video will present solutions to the VCE 2023 Mathematical Methods Written Examination 2, Section B, Question 5. This question starts by defining two functions, f and g. Because they will be used extensively throughout the question, I will take a moment to define them in my class pad. g of x is a transformation of f of x. Part A asks us to describe a possible sequence of transformations that map f to g, starting with a dilation of factor a half from the x-axis, a transformation that corresponds to the half in the definition of g of x. Continuing to work from outside in, the next transformation, corresponding to the two, is a translation of two units in the direction of the negative x-axis. The third transformation, corresponding to the negative x, is a reflection in the y-axis. These transformations can be confirmed by graphing y equals f of x and y equals g of x. I'm going to do so by opening a graph window inside ClassPad's main app and then dropping f of x and g of x into it. Those three transformations can be seen most clearly by looking at the turning point of f of x, which starts at 0, 0,2 then is dilated down by factor a half to 0, 0,1, then translated left two units to minus 2, 0,1, then reflected to 2, 0,1. In part b, the function g of x is split into two functions, g1 and g2, such that g1 is strictly increasing and g2 is strictly decreasing. One way to do this is to split the domain of g at its turning point. Based on the graph of g and what we know about its turning point, the domain of g1 is x greater than or equal to 2 and its range is y greater than or equal to 1. Therefore, g1 inverse has a domain of x greater than or equal to 1 and y greater than or equal to 2. In part c, we are provided with a graph of g as well as the inverses of g1 and g2 and the line y equals x. The intersection point of these graphs, P and Q, can be found by solving g of x equals to x using a class pad. I'm going to ask for a numerical solution as we are asked for answers to two decimal places. Whilst it seems like this solution only provides the x coordinates of points P and Q, as these points lie on the line y equals x, these values are also the y coordinates. In part c, part 2, we are asked for the area of this region. Due to the symmetry of inverse functions about the line y equals x, this can be found by doubling the area between y equals x and y equals g of x. As such, I'm going to double the integral from 1.27 to 4.09 of x take g of x dx. This gives an area of 5.56 to two decimal places. Now this question moves to h of x, which is a generalised version of g of x. Part d asks about the turning point of h of x. Using similar transformational thinking to parts a and b, we can use the mapping of f to h to map f's turning point at 0, 0,2, dilating it down by factor 1 on k to 0, 0,2 on k, translating it to minus k comma 2 on k and then reflecting it to k comma 2 on k. From this we can see that the turning point of h k comma 2 times k to the minus 1 lies on the line y equals 2 times x to the power of n if n equals minus 1. Part e is a generalised version of part c focusing on the inverse of h1 the strictly increasing part of h and when it intersects with h of x. From part c it seems like the function and its inverse will always intersect, 
but that is because in part c, when k equals 2, the function had a turning point below the line y equals x, and with its concave up shape, it had to curve upwards, intersecting the line y equals x, and hence intersecting its inverse. However, this is not the only possible graph of h1 and its inverse. As we learned in part d, for smaller values of k, like k equals a half, the turning point of h of x will lie closer to the y-axis and higher, so the point will be above the line y equals x. If the function then curves away from y equals x, they will not intersect, and so the function will not intersect its inverse. So now we have to find the smallest value of k, such that this intersection will occur. This smallest value of k will be the threshold, where k1 touches the line y equals x and is tangential to it, and so will touch its inverse at that point. So, we need k such that when h intersects the line y equals x, its gradient is equal to 1. This means we need to solve a set of simultaneous equations where h of x equals to x and the derivative of h of x equals to 1. To do this in part e, we are given h inverse. Fortunately, our thinking about h1, about it having to meet y equals x with gradient 1, also applies to its inverse. I'm going to start this computation by defining h inverse. I'm going to call this function h inv. With that done, using the simultaneous equations template, I'm going to solve h inverse equals x and the derivative of h inverse equals 1. This might take a few seconds on a handheld, but the answer k equals 1.27 to two decimal places should be obtained. Part f is about the case where k equals 5, when the graph of h and the inverse of h1 intersect twice. This will look something like this. To find the area between these curves, we need to find the intersection point of h inverse, as given, and h of x, which is 1 on k by f of k take x, given that k equals 5. This equation can be solved numerically. To obtain intersection points, at x equals 1.45 and 8.78 to two decimal places. Now the area required can be found as an integral from 1.45 to 8.78 of h inverse minus h of x given that k equals 5. Class pad's evaluation of this definite integral to two decimal places is 43.91. And that's it, we're done.